Hurley Allen McNair was born on October 28, 1888 in Marshall, Texas. He honed his baseball skills on the sand lots in Texas before turning professional. He stood about five foot six inches tall and weighed approximately 150 pounds during his playing career. According to Negro League researchers Larry Lester and Dick Clark, Hurley was a switch hitter who threw right-handed. Other researchers, however, identify Hurley McNair as a left-handed hitter who also threw left-handed. McNair started his career as a pitcher, but his outstanding hitting resulted in him being transitioned to an outfielder in order to keep his bat in the lineup every day. He had excellent control and was very, very successful as a pitcher, which was evidenced early in his career when in his 23 starts for the 1911 Minneapolis Keystones, he had 21 complete games, 58 strikeouts, and only 18 walks and 189 innings pitched. He also compiled a win-loss record of 15 and seven. As you can tell, this guy was a super athlete. He pitched and he hit. Hurley was an excellent contact hitter who always delivered in the clutch. McNair was said to have possessed keen eyesight, strong wrists, big shoulders, and exceptional bat speed. Opponents and teammates often referred to him as a pint-sized dynamo because he had surprising power for a small man. During his playing career, Hurley consistently batted over 300. Besides being a great hitter, Hurley was also very adept at drawing a walk. He led the Negro National League at least twice in walks and was always among the league leader in base on balls. So that's the recipe for success, controlling the strike zone and consistently hitting balls hard. Definitely mistakes. As you can tell, he controlled the strike zone and when you control the strike zone, you're gonna get more mistakes. So that's the reason why he hit over 300 consistently. According to players who played with and against him, Hurley McNair was known as the best two strike hitter in baseball. George Giles, a teammate of McNair's in 1927 was once quoted as saying the following about Hurley's ability to hit with a two strike count on him. He said, Matt could have taken two strikes against Jesus Christ and base hit the next pitch. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's funny. Defensively, he was considered an exemplary outfielder with a strong arm and excellent speed. With exceptional speed and smart base running skills, he was always a threat to take the extra base, steal a base, or score a routine base hit. In short, he was an excellent base runner with speed to burn. This guy played the game the right way. He played with passion and it shows. Just from hearing what I'm hearing, I know he played hard, he loved the game, he was very passionate about it, and that's why he had so much success. Hurley McNair was one of the first big stars of the Negro National League when it started in 1920. In the first six years of the league, he compiled a batting average of 348 in league games and against top level opponents. And each of these six seasons, he hit well over 300. For more than a quarter of a century, Hurley McNair was one of the best outfielders in black baseball. His professional baseball career started in 1910 with the Houston Black Buffaloes, and he played his last professional game in 1937 for the Cincinnati Tigers. He had a long career, long. Started in 1910, ended in 1937. So that tells you not only was he good, he also was a person people wanted around because he would better his teammates. Any person that's played for that long makes their teammates better and people want them on that team. Mr. Hurley also appears to have been very willing to work with young players to improve their game. He is credited with teaching Willie Wells, Negro League great and member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, to hit a curveball by tying his leg to home plate so that he couldn't bail out on the pitch. Willie Wells described the experience as follows. A boy named Hurley McNair from Kansas City, I gave him a lot of credit for teaching me how to become a hitter. I still couldn't hit the curve. When they break that ball and I see it breaking, I just pull too much. Well, he took my left leg and tied it at home plate and they threw me curve balls and curve balls and more curve balls. When I came back to St. Louis the following year, they were throwing me those curve balls and I was burning them up. I was burning them up. Every time they'd break a curveball, I'd hit it on a line somewhere up against the fence or between the fielders. And as I said previously, he made his teammates better and that's why he stayed in the game for so long. Not to mention he was a great ball player. So that's Hurley McNair 
And if you're interested in learning more about him, the Center for Negro League Baseball Research has done an article about him and I think you would love it. So I'm gonna put it in the description below so you can read more about him and learn about him. It's pretty long, but it goes in depth and shares a lot about Hurley McNair. I really enjoyed this episode and tomorrow I will have another one out. So I wanna thank you guys for watching. If you like this, definitely hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.